Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first off, I want to start by saying my hat's off to Major Applewhite, his staff, and his team. Hard-fought game, exactly what we thought it would be. Talented group on the other sideline, great football team, and, and they made more plays than we did today. Uh, as for our team, uh, tremendously disappointed and disappointed for them. My heart aches for them because when you put everything you have into this game the way they are right now, it hurts. And, uh, you know, bottom line is we are working our butts off. They gave this staff, this coaching staff, everything they had in their bodies for four quarters. They played their butts off, and we played well for about two and a half. But they're giving us everything they have, and so I can keep working, and we'll keep working, and we're going to keep improving. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Mike, when you, you were up 27 24 late third, take us through what happened at that, from that point on here without having looked at the tape. You know, without having looked at the tape and just thinking about the jive sequence, you know, they hit a big one, and uh, we missed a field goal and ended up missing three field goals in that game. You know, you leave nine points out there, that's something that, that we're not expecting to do with the way our special teams perform. Could have kept us in the game a little bit longer, and, you know, hey, Houston made more plays down the stretch. You were down 11, and they made a turnover. You got a turnover on the midfield, had a chance. At that point, we think you, there's, a, there's a window of opportunity here. Without question. I mean, we, anytime the defense gives us the ball, especially in that kind of field position, you're excited and you think, yeah, we're about to go punch this in and we're going to get this going. I mean, we were on the headset talking about the two-point call. So, absolutely, we it believed all, it was going to happen. It all remains in place first quarter, but he didn't have near the, the game the rest of the What were you all doing to, to maybe neutralize him or did you run away from him? How would you say? He's a fine football player. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the heat got to him. You'd have to ask him. But, uh, you know, we, we had some great schemes and our guys did a nice job fighting him. But he's an outstanding football player and I, I think it's hard to completely neutralize him. What did you, how would you look at the difference in your team and the way you played last week to what y'all were able to do today? Oh, I think going against a different scheme, against a much bigger front on both sides of the ball, I thought our guys played pretty well. And, the, you know, if you talk about things just in segments, you know, you look at how we were able to throw and catch the ball downfield and go make some plays. And that, that's great to see. You know, if we can get to the point where we're going to run the ball efficiently and be able to feed our running backs at people and then make those plays over the top and have some play action passes work for us, we're going to keep building offensively. And then, again, I, I thought our defense played amazing for two quarters. So and, you, you know, we got to keep going. What would you have to say about your, your special teams today? Uh, you got uh, the flight for uh, the training field, if I'm not mistaken, and your uh, punt team. Uh, your kicker got, uh, your punter got the flight, uh, was averaging 49 uh, yards uh, for the day on the five. Just talk about it. That's who that punter is. Jack Fox is that guy. He's such a dependable guy. He was unbelievable on all of his punts today. He was excellent on kickoffs, you know, consistently kicking the ball where we wanted to and out of the back of the end zone when we wanted to. He, he's an absolute weapon. So you look at what we did special teams and getting the turnover on special teams, some really big things today. But we had a couple things that we left on the field, uh, a couple things that we'll continue to, to work on and, and button up there as well. And we got to make our field goals. Yeah, absolutely. So anything uh, that's going to be over 45 is going to be Jack from anywhere. But if you look at the quality control stuff we did during training camp, Hayden Tabola was better from the right hash in the shorter ranges. And that's why we used Hayden in the first game, and he put it through the uprights, and today it didn't work out. It does, and it's in that, that place that's so tough on the field where it's a really long field goal. It's hard to punt from the 30-yard line because of what you're going to potentially get back. I mean, Jack's excellent at, at pinning people. Um, probably in one of those, I wish I'd left the offense out there on fourth and five and went for it. That's who I am. So we're going to believe in us, and we'll take field goals when the situation calls for it, but we're not going to be as scared to leave our offense out there either. Last, last week you talked about the jump from week one to week two. How did you guys think you made that jump? I think we made it in a lot of ways, uh, especially the way we, we came out and scored on five of our first seven drives. I thought the defense standing up the way they did. Hey, like on our third drive of the game, I believe we threw an, an interception backed up. And defense comes on the field, goes three and out, and they miss the field goal. I mean, to jump on the field in that sudden change situation and them get zero points out of it, that's, that's the kind of stuff where we're bowing our, our necks and we're getting that done. And again, the throw game is one that took jumps by leaps and bounds today. And I still think it's got a long way to go. I think it can, not that it wasn't good today, but it can be so much better.
How did y'all cut through this health wise? Seemingly well. Seemingly well by first reports. Um, what is the challenges now? Because you're going right back to work tomorrow. So about some thoughts about that. Yes, tomorrow's Monday. Uh, I don't care what your calendar says or what their calendar says. It's going to be our Monday. We're going to put Houston to bed. Uh, matter of fact, the staff will meet at 10 o'clock tonight to talk about grades from this game. We'll start getting our plan. We'll be working on protection oh dang early tomorrow morning. And uh, we'll have these kids in for that Monday practice. We're going to work. Can you talk a little bit about how your receivers uh, performed today, particularly in the red zone? Yes, you guys make some big catches. Great catches. Great catches. I think Aaron Cephas going up and getting the ball and doing the things that – I saw Cephas do on film last year. I saw him doing spring ball and didn't training camp and maybe didn't do as well as I wanted him to last week. And he's another one. Like, we're not seeing, like, the ceiling for Aaron Cephas. We're seeing, like, a good Aaron Cephas that's going to be even better. Uh, like, I, I went up to him after the one where he got tackled. Uh, the DB got, got called for the holding call. And I said, Aaron, you can still make that play. And he said, yeah, coach, I know. I'll make it. And he will. Dang thing's fast, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, uh, I think we did a good job preparing our defense. The way we prepared was with two huddles, and we were trying to snap the ball every eight seconds at them. And uh, I think that's the best way to prepare them. And again, go back to the first half and some of the things we were able to do and some of the, the three and outs. It's one of the points we made to our guys today is, hey, those tempo teams can go three and out in 17 seconds. Let's make them do it a few times. And they did. In the second quarter? Yeah, because it is not decided to me yet. Although Sean has been, the, been more reliable, Sean has not snatched the job you know, coming into this game. And so I felt like to be who I am and to say that our locker rooms are meritocracy, I had to give Jackson an opportunity to get in the game. And, you know, as it turns out, I'm glad we did because, you know, Stank ended up cramping later in the game and Jackson had to come in for some really meaningful time. So I'm glad that it wasn't Jackson's first reps of the game. Yeah, we'll see. I'd love to watch the film before I answer that question, but uh, I do think Sean did some really good things today. and he's, he's like the comment I made about Cephas, like where I think Sean can go, he's nowhere near. It doesn't mean he's not playing well for us today, but it's not where he can be. I just, I, I believe so much in these guys and in, in the growth that they've had since training camp started from week one to week two to where I believe we can go. And we just all got to keep working and get there. Got some talented dudes on that sideline. You know, I mean, they recruit too, and I'm not trying to be smart, but they got some talented dudes over there. And, you know, anytime that you can't get pressure on the quarterback fast enough, it's, it's hard to be out there just standing on those islands all day. And, you know, there were times the rush was getting after them pretty good, and there were times we didn't. And it, it's just, it's tough, and we're going to continue to recruit, and we're going to continue to coach these kids, and, and we'll get better. How's everybody doing today? Um, hats off to Houston. They played a, a great game. Um, they had a good game plan. I think we did as well. Uh, it was a hot one, but like Coach Bloomgren said, I think we made a big jump from last week to this week. We, uh, we got in the film room on Sunday, as we're going to have to practice tomorrow. Um, we're going to have to learn from our mistakes and grow as a team, uh, each position group, and to that, start preparing for Hawaii tomorrow. I'll open it up to questions. I feel a lot better. Um, didn't take as many hits, or at least vicious hits, as I did last week. But um, at the same time, I had to step out of the game in the third quarter, which I really wish I hadn't to, but caught cramps. They weren't really going away. Um, <clears throat> just something I got to do better is hydrate throughout the week and make sure that that doesn't happen so I can be out there for the team and be able to lead. So I feel good, though. Sean, they. The week, the week average, we put four, five, five and a half yards on, uh, on first down in the first half. But it seemed like every time it was first and ten uh, in the second half, we pick up a yard. And uh, I just wonder, first of all, how, how that uh, affected your, your 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 play calling from there on out, and how it limited it, and 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 what U of H did, if you can point out anything to, to limit you that way. Um, I mean, I think they did well, jo a good job at halftime making adjustments. Um, they knew what we wanted to do, and they started making adjustments on first and second down. And then we would get ourselves into third and medium, third and long, and that's not where you want to be. And so we had a, a couple conversions there early on in the second half. But <clears throat> I think to your point, that's really where we got to be better is on first and second down, is being able to 
pick up a couple yards so we can get in third and manageable like we did in the first half when we scored points. So I think it's just a understanding what we need to do and execute it better and then know that they're going to also game plan and scheme up some things. So just it's a chess match really out there. Can you talk about your comfort level with some of your uh, big receivers, right? Harmon, Aaron, Sinkus, and the end zone and the red zone. How, how nice is it that you can just throw it up and trust them to go get it? It's awesome. Uh, both of those guys are playmakers. Um, to reiterate what Coach Bloom said, I don't think we've seen the best of Aaron Cephas. I don't even think we're close. Uh, I personally don't think I've seen the best of him, but in training camp, he's made some plays where it's like, wow. So when you got two guys like that, not only in the red zone, but just out in the field, um, capable of just making a play, and uh, really just our job is to give him a chance. That's what Coach Picasso always says all the time, is, hey, just give him a chance, and the dude's going to go make a play. Uh, like we had in, in the... Uh, the last drive of the first half, we got a pass interference call. I mean, really, that's that's all they can do is, is grab and hold and hope that he doesn't make a play. So I, it's uh, it's fantastic having those guys out there. When you, uh, when you catch everything, you said, but when, you, when you're looking at that all over the other side of the line, what are you thinking? He's another dude. I mean, he's a great player. Hats off to him. But at the same time, we got dudes as well. I mean, I think Shea Baker did a great job today. Um, containing him. I think our offensive line did a phenomenal job of keeping me clean. I really didn't take any big hits, like I said. Um, and so, but I mean, he's a great player. Uh, I think we had a good game plan and we, we executed well. Is it any more painful you, because you, you were up 27 points for late third, you had a great shot and it gets away. Does that make it any more painful? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime we lose, it's painful. And I think everybody in that locker room expected to win that game coming out of halftime. I mean, we all knew we had a chance, and we all knew we wanted to win the game. We had the lead. And so I think, yeah, anytime you have a lead and you end up losing that lead and you lose the game, it's going to be disappointing. And at the end, at the same time, if you lose, it's going to be disappointing. So, But like Coach said in the locker room, nobody can hang their head. We made a good jump from week one to week two, and now we're moving forward on to Hawaii. What was the feel? A lot of confidence. We had just gone down two-minute drive scored a touchdown to take the lead back, and we were getting the ball. <clears throat> Offense was saying, hey, defense, keep doing your job. We got you. And the defense was saying, hey, keep putting up points, and we'll take care of the rest. So, but obviously, that didn't happen. We uh, kind of sputtered on offense, and they made some plays on their offensive side. So, but I think there was, a, there was a, a confidence that wasn't necessarily there before that we had at halftime. So. Did the offense get discouraged at all by the field goals? No. We have Jack Fox's back. Um, we have our kickers back. Uh, we know. We see in practice they hit those all the time. And in reality, we should be scoring touchdowns. That's what we do when we get into the red zone and pass the 50. We're trying to put up seven points versus three. And so when it comes to it, we know that we have trust in them and they're going to make their field goals. So no, there wasn't really any uh, disappointment or shun of the kickers, no. Thank you all. I just want to start off by saying yeah, it's definitely disappointing that we lost the game. We came in in, in halftime, everybody pumped up, everybody riled up, expecting to win like we did before we started the game, uh, as we did when we came out and even in the fourth quarter when we didn't win, expected to win. Uh, hats off to Coach Bloom and his staff, great game plan. Uh, everybody was in the right spot where we needed to be to be successful. Some plays were made, some plays were not. But other than that, uh, we're going to keep fighting, and we're expecting to win. Questions? Aaron, what is it like for you when uh, you're talking about the game that this offense really got to a rhythm? What is it like for you, especially after the struggles last year, to see that two games as you can This is just the game plan. Just the game plan. Our coaches come, come in prepared. They work really hard every day trying to figure out what offenses, I mean, what plays to run, uh, what will work against what defense. And we just go out and execute, execute the plan that they create. After two games, like, what do you feel like your progression has you in terms of where you'd like to let them take the this season? I'm not, I'm not happy at all. We did not win the game. So I guess I, I did. I missed some blocks, uh, missed some assignments. I need to get those cleaned up. Not, not happy at all. There were a couple of back shoulder throws. Did you, is that something you all worked on in the week? Not, not necessarily. Uh, we work on a lot of different throws pretty much all situations, but nothing more lean towards back shoulder throws at all. You talked all offseason about how you're focusing on how your craft as a receiver in all aspects. How important is it now with two games under your belt to get on the field and have some guys pulling at you and grabbing at you and making it more challenging for you to get to the football? 
Uh, well, we look at the bottom line, and I'm expected to make the play, regardless of where hands are at, uh, what the defense is doing, whether they're grabbing, pulling. Uh, the play should be made, and if it's not, then I didn't do my job. How's everyone doing? Doing good. Uh, first, I just wanted to say, yeah, hats off to Houston. Um, they had a good game plan against us. We had a one against them. Uh, came out in the second half firing. You know, we had some good plays on defense in the first, just too many big plays on defense in the second. Um, and that's one thing we need to work on. They didn't really have a consistent drive, you know, just logging down the field. Uh, but yeah, we just got to stop the big plays, but hats off to them. They got some good players, some good athletes. Uh, however, we did see some stuff where we improved today, too, and there's still more work to be done. What did you think of Derek? Uh, Derek? Yeah, he's, I mean, we knew he was athletic. We, we saw him last year, uh, although he wasn't a quarterback. Uh, we weren't exactly sure what kind of arm uh, he would have, but he showed it off today. And he can also run the ball, and we knew that. The, uh, the read option was going to be a big play for them just because they can get uh, their running back in space and also have the quarterback as an option too. Well, of course, it's, I mean, it's disappointing. Uh, it, it was a chance for us to, you know, beat, beat the hometown rivals, you know. Uh, I mean, like I said, like I said, there was some good things that we saw in the first half. I mean, offense was scoring, defense was stopping. And it, it was fun. And I think that that's a good thing to look forward to in the next week and the next week and the next week. But, yeah, it's definitely disappointing losing the U of H. Uh, uh, they're just down the road. You know, we have a lot of intermingle. Uh, I know people from U of H, people know us from U of H. You know, it's just, yeah, it's definitely disappointing. Um, taking nothing away from them, you're up three late third. Is it the sense that you let, a, you let one get away or let the game get away from you? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, yes, we definitely let the game get away. Uh, we, had a, we had a great opportunity to do something that we knew we could do, but not a lot of people in the city knew we could do. And that's, that's what's most disappointing. Um, but yeah, I definitely think we let the game get away from us. And it shouldn't have, just like I said, too many big plays. Um, yeah. How, how did the tempo of their offense feel to the defense? Uh, well, different. It, it was different for sure. Uh, we knew they were coming in with a tempo offense. Like Coach Bloom said, we were running two huddles. So we were you know, into play. There was another huddle running back on. Um, and we knew their coaching staff and what they, what they had planned although we didn't have film on them. Uh, yeah, it was just different, you know, especially in the heat of the day. We haven't played a, we played a game at 11 a.m. yet, so we knew the tempo was going to be a factor, but I think we handled it pretty well in the first half. Uh, and in the second half, really, I, I, I really don't think the tempo was a problem, just too many big plays. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I think we played really well. Uh, the big plays come from the pressure's not getting there. You know, sometimes the offense blocks it up perfectly. The pressure doesn't get there, and that makes it hard when the in the back end playing man coverage. QB scrambles, you know, stuff on them. Uh, but when the pressure's getting there, you know, it, they, they couldn't do anything against us. So I, I just think it's a matter of getting there, and that's what happened with all the big plays where we're sending pressures, and the pressures weren't getting to the quarterback, and he, had, he was comfortable. He'd step up, make a throw down the field. You know, it's hard to cover a man for five seconds, six seconds you know, in the back end, but uh, we'll get it figured out. It sounds like the attitude is a little bit high the pressure. Uh, in a way. I mean, we expect to get there every time. So, uh, I mean, obviously we expect the DBs to cover for, or we cover perfectly, but it's a hard thing to ask. You know, it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, we, I guess we live in that much.